Hello and welcome to Bro Jewel. Today we have 5 mods that you've probably never heard of. Each one of these mods offers something entirely different to the game, but they're all similar in that they're probably not as well known as they should be. To start things off we have a recent mod by the name of Tail Armors. After 6 long years someone finally got around to offering more suitable protection for the beast races. Tail Armors are exactly what they sound like, separate new pieces that offer armoured protection for the tails of Khajiits and Argonians. The mod covers 20 armors from the vanilla game, including everything from Fur to Daedric, as well as other sets belonging to various factions, like the Blades or the Forsworn. It also comes in two versions depending on the approach you want the mod to have. The first option adds separate, entirely new tail armor pieces to the game, which can be equipped alongside the matching set or any other armor. These are craftable and let you mix and match the armors to suit your style. The second version of the mod, however, simply integrates the tail pieces with the vanilla sets. So if a Khajiit or Argonian equips them, they'll automatically have their tail covered. Both versions work great and can be downloaded for the original game or for the special edition. If you're looking to give your beastly character an extra bit of flair and protection, then this is the mod for you. Next up is Sleep to Gain Experience. This nifty little mod can mix up progression in your next playthrough of Skyrim. It works by forcing you to sleep in order to receive any of the experience you've gained. Normally, progression in Skyrim is a constant stream of growth that'll send you in and out of menus to update your attributes and perks fairly often. But with this mod everything is hidden and stored away until you sleep, and then it's an explosion of growth all at once. This is similar to the classic level up mod, but that simply blocks you out of the perk menu until you sleep. Whereas this mod secretly stores all of your experience away, even if you save and quit the game, and then unleashes it after a good night's rest. You can tweak the mod settings to decide how much sleep is required, as well as what percentage of the stored experience is gained per sleep. This lets you continue to have short naps without triggering the experience gain, great for realistic needs mods. All in all this can be a fantastic way to grow a character, and from our testing you practically always have something waiting for you after a well earned rest. Jumping to something a bit simpler, we have a couple of retexture mods. The first is the Gate of Solitude. This offers a more fitting entrance to the most powerful and noble city of Skyrim. It's decorated to emphasise the capital's location as well as its reliance on the sea for defence and trade. The vanilla door was generic and a scaled down version was used for a couple of other buildings in the city. But now the gate stands out much more than before, making the long walk up to solitude a little less painful. We'd love it if the gate changed throughout the Civil War questline, changing it from something like this, to a reinforced one during the war and then maybe to something else entirely depending on who wins. The second retexture also focuses on solitude, but more specifically the Temple of the Divines. Solitude and temple frescoes add some extra colour and panache to the otherwise drab holy places of Skyrim. Instead of simply more nothingness behind each shrine, they now feature stained glass windows for each of the nine divines. The mod comes with a bunch of different versions depending on how much of the mod you want. If you only want a decorated display in the Temple of the Divines, then you can do that. The mod also offers a version that adds the stained windows to all of the major city's Halls of the Dead, as well as several other holy or worthy locations like the College of Winterhold. You can also choose a version that zooms out a little, letting you see more of the artwork. If you're thinking about playing as a holy character, then this is a great simple way to spice things up a bit. And finally, today's last mod is Holgarth's additional vanilla hair. We're always fond of mods that make clever use of vanilla assets to offer something entirely new, and this mod does just that. By ripping apart the vanilla hair models and then moulding them together in various ways, the mod offers around 80 entirely new hairstyles, spread across both genders and all races. Since they use vanilla assets, they fit in seamlessly alongside the other hairstyles and will be affected by any texture overhauls that you have installed. The hairstyles vary from a bunch of new shaved minimalistic styles to ones filled with more creativity than seen in vanilla. This can be great if you're roleplaying for a simple monk or a more stylish thief. The new styles really do look like they could have been part of the vanilla game all along, and since most other hair mods tend to look a bit out of place, this is going to become a must have for us in a future playthrough. And that's the end of today's spotlight, hopefully one or two of these mods will be added to your jam packed load orders soon. And if they do, then be sure to leave endorsements and support my daughters whenever possible. As always, be sure to check out g2a.com and thanks for watching.